All right, Mr. Brad. Hello. Talk to us about PVP3. So PVP3, PVP is an acronym that previously stood for Pro Video Player. Uh, with version 3, we got rid of the P Pro Video Player name and now I actually refer to it lovingly as just the acronym PVP. The reason is, is because PVP3 is so much more than just playback. It's Pro Video Playback, it's Pro Video Processing, it's Pro Video Performance. And so what we're actually doing here at NAB, we've got a 10 by 20 booth and we've got all kinds of different LED screens and a big 4K screen and everything that you're seeing in our booth is actually powered by the new PVP3 which is coming out this summer. And so, just to show you the wide shot, if you actually would pan the Tim, if you'll pan over there. So we've got all kinds of different things that are actually happening here. On the sides, we've got two columns that are 3.9 millimeter video tiles that are actually uh, rotated at 62 degrees. In the center, I've got a 1.9 millimeter wall uh, that's showing all different kinds of content. And at the bottom, you'll see all kinds of picture and pictures that I've got in here. On the far right, I've got another copy of the DVD that's running. Uh, on the, the next, I've got four, four video feeds coming in via SDI. And on the left, I've got two more copies of uh, our NDI feeds coming in. NDI is a somewhat new technology. NDI stands for Network Digital, Network Digital Interface or Network Distributed Interface. Anyway, the acronym's NDI and we're professional, so we only just use uh, acronyms. But anyway, it's a great new technology that's an open source that allows us to actually transmit video over Ethernet with very, very low latency and very, very high quality. And it makes it very, very easy to distribute video so you don't have to actually have routers and say, all right, I want this this uh, feed to go to this feed. It's just all through standard Ethernet switching equipment, and so it makes it very easy and cost-effective to transmit videos over long distances. Uh, and in fact, we're part of the NDI consortium, and then on my machine, I actually have access to over 200 different video feeds that are active uh, in, in uh, at NAB right now. It's kind of cool, all these different companies sharing different data. So. The, in addition to the LED screens, I also have this 4K display that's hooked up just to show everything that I can actually do uh, with a single computer uh, running PVP3. So we're running everything you see off of a single computer. It's a Mac Pro trash can. PVP3 is a Mac only uh, application at this time. Um, and we have 15 different layers of content that I'm playing, both content that I'm playing back within PVP. Uh, that would be the playback portion. And then uh, different videos that I'm actually getting live via SDI or NDI and I can do different effects and whatnot on those just as easily as I do any content that I'm actually playing back within the computer itself. And so the interface has radically changed so Tim's gonna go over to my other side so he can actually see the interface. Um, and this may look very uh, I don't know, a little daunting, it's because we're doing a lot of different things. We can actually make this look really, really simple, just like it did in uh, with PVP2. Uh, I can shrink this down if I can actually get my hands on it. So, what I actually have here is what looks like PVP2 very, very much, except for I actually have live video previews for each of the layers that I have, so I can actually see what's going on at a glance on all the different layers that I have happening in PVP3. So here are my live video inputs and I can just see those in real time anytime I want to. So that's really nice as opposed to just a thumbnail that's sitting up there. Uh, here's my clip libraries. I have my playlists over here on the left hand side that I can pull up. And then to trigger things I can just click on whatever layer I want to make it active and then I can click it to make it live. So one difference that I have in PVP3 is uh, I have the ability to have target sets. We have global target sets. So what does that mean? Well, let me step back. The workspace that I'm setting here, here is the workspace. So here is the center screen wall that we're matching up here, the 1.9 mil. And then the columns that are over on the left-hand side are what you're seeing on the left-hand side there, and on the right-hand side over there. And then the 4K display that's represented right here is my 4K display that's sitting right here. So the targets, when I talk about targets, I have a spanned target that's called LED span. That has a single target that is spanning all of my LED screens. So as I move this around in real time, Tim pans up, you can see that it's actually moving that content around in real time. So it allows you to slice and dice the content in real time just based upon the displays that you have connected. So it's extraordinarily powerful. Um, but all these target sets are, are shared across all the different layers that I have. So a layer is just a, a socket, if you will, for a piece of content. And whatever content that you're playing in that layer is going to be shown in all the targets that you have specified for that layer. So in this case, let me clear this out, on my 4K screen, I have a single video that's actually playing. Well, 
on my 4K Sub 2, I have other target sets. And you can see the little previews of what these target sets look like. So for this one, you can see on the 4K screen, it's got little three little boxes. Each one of those is a target. So when I actually play content on this, and I'll choose these caterpillars, you can see it's actually playing those three different places. You can have as many targets as you want on your output, and they can span over multiple screens. Now what's also really cool is that I can actually do different video uh, effects. So I can add and I'll say I want to make a blur. Well, when I turn on this blur, if you want to see over here, I'm just going to turn it off. It's, it shows as a blur now. I can turn it off and it just transitions my effects on and off. And I can layer different effects. So in addition to this blur, I'm going to want to do, I don't know, we'll do an old film look, I guess. So there's my old film look with the blur and I can actually choose what the order of things are, the order of operations. Do I want the blur to happen before the, the sapia tone effect? And I can save this as, a, uh, as an effect set. So I've cre previously created an effect set that's called the hex blur. And so when I select that, it's going to change everything and now we have these little hexagon shapes. I don't know if you can see it through the camera or whatnot. But the point is you get a lot of flexibility and a lot of ability to actually save all the different changes that you're actually doing. Further, with all the different things we're actually showing on here, we're adding the ability to save what is presently live as a single queue. So, as an example, I have, I'm gonna just clear everything out. Well, with 15 different layers of content, it would take a long time if I went clip by clip by clip to actually lay all that out. Well, I've created a single queue down here that has all 15 different layers, and you can see the little dots that appear under there. Each one of those is representative of a piece of content. Um, when I click on this, it is then making everything live exactly like I left it. So all 15 pieces and 15 layers of content are being triggered all at one time. So whether I want to actually predefine the content that's going into each individual layer or I want to operate it on the fly, I have that flexibility. We've also added a new mode. In PVP2, we have this ability to set up what is called a macro where you're defining the content that's going to each individual layer. But in PVP3, we've made it a lot easier because now we actually have an action view and my action view is going to show me all my layers and the columns that they exist, so it allows me to very easily see the cues that are going to each one of the, the layers. Now I can actually operate it in this mode, so when I come to my pretty content playlist, uh, my 4K sub 2 layer is selected. If, as I choose different layers, you'll see the icons are actually showing up and they're kind of grayed out. That's because they're not explicitly stated to be on this, they're actually untargeted. They, don't, they haven't been explicitly assigned to any one layer. But when I, so when I trigger it on this, if I click on the queue, it's going to trigger it in 4K sub 2 and there it is right there. Which is right here. But I can actually in real time choose where I want it to appear just by saying, oh, see it's grayed, it has sort of a grayed out. So if I want it to appear in 4K sub 1, when I click on there, it's going to trigger those caterpillars in 4K sub 1. So. It's a, it's a very powerful way of operating and again we've got far more layers than most people would actually reasonably use because we're at NAB and we want to show off a little bit. Um, and so yeah, this is, uh, this is PVP3, we've got lots of other things, we've got SDI support for the outputs which is very convenient. Lots of times in live video production we output via HDMI or whatnot but we have to go those long distances which HDMI won't travel so we'll actually get these little bricks and convert to SDI so the ability to actually have SDI support right in the in the uh, in the software is, is is very important and allows us to actually have an external box we've actually in the office we've had 12 different SDI outputs while simultaneously bringing in four SDI inputs and it works brilliantly so you don't actually have to have all these different uh, dongles to plug into the back of your computer and whatnot so it's very very powerful um, further uh, again, we have the 4K support. We have got all kinds of different uh, um, cropping and capabilities that you have to manipulate the video pre-processing and whatnot. Uh, NDI, which again is that ability to, to distribute content over a network. Uh, we, can, we can output NDI as well as input NDI. We have multiple siphon support, so if you're into using siphon with external uh, video content manipulation uh, packages, we have multiple siphon outputs and a host of other features that really make PVP3 an ideal solution for any kind of live production that you have video screens as part of. And so we're really, really excited about introducing it in AB. It'll be available this summer. Uh, at this point, everything that we've done is based on the user experience that we're actually, when you're, you're sitting in front of the computer, because we find that 90% probably of our users are actually using the software 
in front of the computer. Uh, now whenever we get back, and the reason that we're delaying the release until later this summer, so we can work on those protocols to really firm them up so that it, the lighting designers are, are comfortable with using it with their Grand Amaze or their Vistas, so you can trigger and, and make really uh, strong use of it with MIDI support and touch OSC or whatnot. Uh, lots of different protocols, uh, video uh, production protocols. We, we're working with a local news station so they can actually just use it. They're just using it for live video inputs, for switching of live video inputs. It's sort of a screen control system, but they've got to be able to trigger all those different events from their video switchers. So that's what we're working on uh, in the in the weeks and months to come. And we're really excited to actually put this in everybody's hands and, and so you can, we can see what you're doing with it. But uh, we're really excited about it and hope you are too.